Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials. By using MATLAB and Simulink simulations, in this tutorial we show that PID controllers cannot reject time-varying disturbances. As a test case, we consider the following simulation scenario. The plant is a second-order system in the generic form parametrized by natural and damped frequency and damping ratio. This is a fairly general form of the system or of the plan that we want to control. The controller is a pure PID controller. In this tutorial, we will show that such a basic feedback control system cannot reject time-varying or harmonic disturbances. Motivation. On popular online learning platforms and on YouTube, there are a number of people giving lectures on control engineering. We have observed that the majority of these lectures do not correctly explain the limitations of PID controllers or they spread incorrect information. Consequently, people often think that PID controllers are super powerful. Also, people tend to think that they do not need to study control engineering methods beyond the classical PID controllers. In fact, with advancement of robotics, guidance, navigation and control, there is and there will be more and more need for advanced model-based control methods. This video lesson will demonstrate one of the limitations of PID controllers that motivate the need for developing and studying more advanced control engineering methods. Time varying disturbances can be rejected by combining PID controllers with disturbance observers. We have created a separate video tutorials explaining how to implement disturbance observers for disturbance rejections. A link is given in the description below this video. Before we start with the Simulink and MATLAB implementation, it's first very important to revise a basic structure of the feedback control system. Over here, you can see the basic feedback control system in the Laplace complex domain. Over here, YFS is the output of the system in the Laplace domain. DFS is the disturbance affecting the system, and this is the external input disturbance. COFS is a transfer function of the controller. In our case, COFS will be the PID controller. POFS is the transfer function of the plant. FFS is the output of the controller. EFS is the control error, RFS is the control signal, and over here you can see the feedback loop. The error is simply equal to RFS minus YFS. Another important thing that we need to revise before we start with implementation is the prototype of a second order system. Usually in control engineering books, you will see this general parameterization of the second order system. In this transfer function, omega n is the natural and damped frequency, and zeta is the damping ratio. Now, some of you who are not experienced with control engineering might ask me the following question. Why do we use this prototype? Well, you can easily create a very realistic system by creating, or better to say, by selecting the proper values of zeta and omega n. For example, if I want to have a well-damped system of the second order, I will select zeta to be equal to, for example, 1, or a number close to 1, and omega n is the natural undamped frequency. For example, if you want to have a system with a high bandwidth, you will select large values of omega n. Okay, let's start with Simulink and MATLAB implementation. The idea is to create a MATLAB script that will define the system parameters as well as the parameters of the PID controller. Consequently, click on New Script and type this. S is equal to TF of S. In this way, we are defining a symbolic transfer function that's equal to S. Later on, we can use this S to define our planned transfer function. Next, 
Let's define our plant. Let's assume zeta or zeta equal to 0 0.3. That is, we want to create a system that is not well damped. That's why we assume the relatively low value of zeta. And then let's assume omega n, denoted by wn, to be equal to 10. Let's construct a transfer function of our plant. p is equal to omega n squared. divided by s squared plus 2 multiplying zeta multiplying omega n multiplying s plus omega n squared. Okay, so this is our plant. Let's evaluate this part and let's press F9 and let's see our transfer function over here. Looks good. Next. In the Simulink model, we need to specify the coefficients in the numerator and the denominator of our transfer function. Consequently, we need to extract the coefficients in the numerator and the denominator of our transfer function. To do that, we need to type this. num is equal to p dot num, then in the curly brackets, 1. This will extract the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator of this transfer function and consequently let's extract the denominator coefficient so let's type p dot then then in the curly brackets one and let's see the result select this and press f9 and over here we can see the coefficients and let's compare these coefficients with our transfer function and we can see over here that we have numerator 100 denominator 1 600. Perfect. Let's continue. Next, we need to define the parameters of our PAD controller. So let's type this PAD controller and let's, for example, select the proportional gain to be equal to 5, the integral gain to be equal to 4, and the derivative gain to be equal to 0 0.5. Good. Let's select everything and load everything in the computer memory. Next, let's start Simulink. We can start Simulink by typing Simulink in command window. After starting the Simulink, click on blank model. And let's start with modeling. The first step is to implement the transfer function of the plant. Consequently, double click over here and search for transfer function. Click on transfer FCN, expand it a little bit, double click here, and let's specify the numerator coefficients. Here, type num. And as you can see over here, Simulink is able to retrieve the variables from the MATLAB workspace. And over here, let's specify the denominator coefficients by simply typing then. And here they are. Now, click on apply and click on OK. Over here, type plant. Good. Next, let's add a sum block over here. Double click here and type sum. Now, let's expand the sum. Double click on the sum and over here erase this vertical bar and add the vertical bar at the end. Click on apply and click on OK. As a consequence, you will see that this lower port went at the top. Click OK. Connect this part over here. This port will be connected to the disturbances. Consequently, let's create disturbance block. For illustration, we will first add the constant disturbance. So double click here and search for constant. Here it is. Connect this constant to this port over here double click on the constant and enter 2 and click on apply click OK good next we need to add a PAD controller double click here and search for PAD click on PAD controller and here is the PAD block good double click on PAD controller and let's specify the PAD control parameters here Let's specify KP. 
here let's specify ki and over here let's specify kd over here you can see the transfer function of the PAD controller those of you who are familiar with basic control engineering concepts will immediately recognize that this derivative term is not in a pure derivative form in fact this is a hybrid derivative term that acts as a pure derivative for low frequencies however for high frequencies it acts as a low pass filter this is done since it's not desirable to amplify high frequencies consequently we are actually combining a derivative term with a low pass filter and click on ok and here it is now connect the output of the PAD to the input of the summation block let's add the reference signal as a constant double here double click here and search for constant double click on constant and let's select for example 4 this is our reference signal next we need to create the feedback loop to do that double click here and search again for sum click on the sum block enlarge the sum block double click over here and change this sign to minus click on apply and click on OK connect the output of the plant to this input of this summation block and expand this move the PAD block connect the ports over here align everything such that it's in a single line connect everything and that's basically it over here we have the error then over here we have the output of the system over here we have the reference and over here we have the disturbance let us now add a scope over here such that we can visualize the signals double click here and search for scope here it is connect the scope with the output of the system and let's run the simulation to run the simulation simply click here and be patient and let's see the output double click here and let me click once again we can see the output and let's analyze the output of the system first of all the disturbance is acting on the system however this PAD controller is able to suppress the disturbances and at the same time to achieve the reference point tracking. This is why we are able to control the system. However, let us now show the case when the disturbance is not constant. That is, let's simulate non-constant disturbances. To do that, simply click here to close this window click here to erase this block and instead of a constant block let's add the harmonic function for example let's add the simple sine wave double click here and search for sine and you should see sine wave if you don't see sine wave simply search for sine wave and here it is click over here to move this block and let's now connect the port let's first erase this let's erase this and connect this block over here good let's now run this simulation once again and now if we click on the scope we will see that our PAD controller is not able to completely reject the disturbances to convince you that this is actually the case let us increase the simulation time we can do that by clicking here and increasing this number to 20 and let's click run again and let's see what do we see over here and here it is we can see that the PAD controller is not able to reject the sign disturbances and this is one of the fundamental limitations of the PAD controller to summarize, in this video tutorial, we learn two things. First of all, we learn how to simulate a PAD control loop in 
Simulink in MATLAB. Then, we learned that the PAD controller is able to reject the constant disturbances. However, the PAD controller is not able to reject non-constant or time-varying disturbances. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.